Hello everyone, sometimes characters are forgotten about in a set, sometimes a sculpt just isn't accurate, or sometimes we just want to make a figure and give it a dial. This is a show all about custom clicks, repaints, and more. This is Sculpt Swap. You absolute fools, it's not Calder, it's me, Simeon. And this time we are unboxing the Manticore Paint Night Kit. So, as you can see... It's not a pre-painted, but it is a model by WizKids. So the cool thing is they were doing these uh, uh, paint nights for a while, and then uh, good old Corona happened. So they came out pretty quickly with these paint night kits. So they send you home with a huge array of WizKids paints, two brushes, the 3D Mini, and a little paint tray. So if you watch V Muse's stuff, she actually does a much better job showing off this stuff than I do. But, uh, yeah, what do we got? This is the Manticore. So I'm going to go a little bit into some details about the Manticore so we can decide what exactly kind of dial we want to swap onto. Um, but before I do, just wanted to show you everything that comes in the paint kit. All right, before we get into painting, let's get into what kind of dial we're going to be looking at for the Manticore. Now, I pulled this up. This is from the D&D 5th edition uh, monster manual, I assume. Um, so you can see the base stats for the Manticore. Um, this doesn't really transfer to anything Heroclix-wise, uh, but it does have things like dark vision, 60 feet, so that could translate into uh, improved targeting hindering, 30 speed, 30 feet speed, that's pretty standard, to be honest. Um, like, most humanoids can go 30 feet. Uh, it can fly a little bit faster, so that's it's ground speed and then in flight. Uh, it's got tail spike regrowth. The manticore has 24 tail spikes. Used spikes regrow when the manticore finishes a long rest. So, uh, basically, per encounter, it's got 24 tail spikes, and then as long as it doesn't have multiple encounters before it rests it's going to have those again. Um, it's got actions like multi-attack, can make three attacks, one with its bite, two with its claws, or three with its tail spikes. Bite, melee weapon attack, so that's just kind of the D&D &D stuff, what you roll to see what you damage and how much damage you deal. Um, but yeah, already I'm seeing some hero clicks kind of language. I'm seeing uh, flight, I'm seeing speed, um, I'm seeing... Uh, tail spikes that can shoot out and then be regrown uh and i'm also seeing claws and bite which would be fang in uh hero clicks vernacular uh but look at this guy look how terrifying that is he's got several rows of teeth he's got all these spiny protuberances the body of like a lion or tiger something uh giant bat wings and then there's the aforementioned tail spikes so Let's get into it. And I'm just going to kind of speed through this. I don't want to read you everything because um, not everything's going to apply to hero clicks, but we'll we'll pick out the the very core things. So immediately I see impressive range. That's a hero clicks thing that I can see. I've said that about characters before. So I'm looking for something with an impressive range. I'm also looking for something with blades and claws, probably. Um, they hunt in packs. That's not really applicable to anything unless I'm doing multiples of these. Uh, not particularly bright. <laughs> um, but possesses a malevolent nature and the ability to converse. Uh, let's see. Ch -ch -ch -ch. Manticurs serve wicked masters. Yes, okay. Another could serve hunting companion. Huh. Fear dragons. So... I guess my biggest takeaway from this is he can fly. He's clearly a larger creature. Um, I don't see any, like, outwardly, like, super armor kind of stuff, but he does have a natural 14 armor class in D&D. &D. Uh, so I'm looking for a two, probably a 2x2 two two with flight. I want some range because it does say that they typically use their tail spikes their uh tail spikes to deal damage while in flight before they finish their prey off with their blades and claws uh their fangs and claws i guess um so yeah i'm, I'm gonna look for something with like a like at least toughness flight two by two base and range so in order to do that 
I'm just going to pop over to the units tab here and I'm just going to go this should be fairly easy so we just need to get let's see we'll just say range is greater than how about five that seems fair power I want somewhere on the attack power to have blades at some point in the dial I think it should have blades uh, and then we'll put base type at 2x2 two two, and we will put speed type as wing and that should cover all of our bases alright so we've got some Borg tactical cubes let's look at those dials um, no probably not pulse waving don't feel like invincible or seven damage is very good bottom dial I guess it wouldn't be too bad uh, but let's I think we can do better again I, I yeah this is a little little high cost for what I'm looking for the Borg tactical cubes um, green puff dragon sounds pretty good though let's see here 225 points at the top dial bottom dial 75 points and it does have some charge blades bottom dial which is exactly what I'm looking for because uh, it looks like it starts with range and then uh, goes down to attack later on so let's see what green puff dragon does we've got the trait winds that can upend tanks force blast when green puff dragon moves one or more times during an action after resolutions she can use force blast at no cost that's not too bad uh, I've got hypersonic. I feel like that's fair. It's not an overly fast hypersonic, but uh, as we saw in the monster manual, it does. It is a little bit faster when it's flying than a normal person when they're walking. So, 11 speeds not too bad for that. Um, impervious might be a bit much, but we do have these bottom dials that we can focus on. So maybe this 150 point line is more accurate. Uh, we do have this special speed power, building a nest out of a skyscraper. Sidestep free, destroy adjacent piece of blocking terrain. If you do, generate and hold a light object, then make a range object attack. Green Puff Dragon may activate this twice per turn. I'm going to go ahead and ignore that. That doesn't seem super... I mean, we're shooting quills, we're not throwing terrain and uh, chunks of wall. Uh, and then we've got revert to original size. Green Puff Dragon has tiny symbol instead of colossal and can't use her trait. Ah. I'm going to ignore this one too because I really like this dial. I really like the, the range, the running shot, the just two clicks of invuln up top down to toughness. I like the dial for for the manticore. I, I really do, especially with the bottom end blades. Let's see what Vange Whedon has. Uh, a lot of similar stuff. Just a little bit higher costed up at the top. I really don't like that impervious, and the shape change doesn't make a ton of sense to me. Um, uh, yeah, Pulse Wave's not good. Alpha Sentinel's out. Although I do have an extra one of those, and there's Barrier on the lower dial. Yeah, that one's not great. Uh, Thor's Mighty Chariot... No, that's just, no. I'm not going to destroy my one Thor Mighty Chariot for this. All right, so it looks like Green Puff Dragon is a pretty solid sculpt. Already a pretty solid D&D uh, &D kind of sculpt. Um, just a giant green dragon. Uh, by D&D &D standards, it would be medium-sized wyvern, I guess. It's not uh, definitely not like an elder dragon or anything, even remotely close. But yeah, looks like a solid dial. So it hits on the few things that I really picked up from the little uh, clip it that I read. Six range, um, got some moving attack, some running shot. Probably will play it at the 150 or the 75 point lines. And then, yeah, I get to end as a uh, on the ground charging, blading manticore. So let's get into the paint. All right, I do have to shout out the game shop in Bellevue, Nebraska, where I got this paint and take, and I'll be getting the rest of them as they come out from there as well. Um, here, I'm just messing around, seeing what kind of base color that I want to do. Uh, this is not a tutorial video for how to paint miniatures. Um, as you'll be able to tell by the end, I am definitely not a proficient painter, um, 
but you don't have to be. That's what's awesome about painting miniatures. You don't have to be the best. You just have to enjoy it. And, um, yeah, that's, that's basically it. I mean, as long as you're enjoying painting, uh, I mean, as you'll see by the end of the video, there's definitely going to be some mix ups and some, uh, places that I can't quite get because my fingers just don't sit still long enough to hit all of the really finely detailed stuff. But, uh, yes, the manticore, I decided to go with a kind of a tannish yellow for the base to kind of copy that lion thing. I really like doing some out of the box colors whenever I do these miniatures so that it was supposed to be red, but my red turns out to be more pink than red. So it's got kind of a pink mane going on. And then as you can see, Oh, yep. Didn't quite put it in front of the camera view there, but as you can see, I'm going with a, like a pretty bright yellow body, a pink ish mane. And then I've got a deeper tanned face to really like bring out the fact that that's not just the same skin tone as the body. So it's got that human, that creepy, creepy human face. Um, I decided to go with my purple. Uh, I didn't mix it with anything. So it's just a standard purple that I have uh, for the wings. Cause I really want the wings to pop out as like a separate entity too. Um, I really like the chimera aspect of the, uh, not chimera, the, uh, manticore. Jeez, I really like the chimera aspects of the manticore, how it's multiple creatures in one. And I think that's like the most terrifying part of it. So, um, this little black disc sitting in front is what you would typically put your D and D base on. Uh, we won't be needing that for this though. Um, so for the tail, I decided to go with like a skin fleshy kind of color because I really like Cronenberg kind of stuff. And it just really, I don't know the weird bony spikes. I thought it would look good if it looked like a weird flesh appendage with like, like gross kind of spikes coming out of it. Kind of like marrow from, uh, the X-Men comics or, any of the X related titles that she appears in, um, like a painful growth coming out of the back of the manticore. Uh, so yeah, at this point I'm trying to, you know, finish up some of the finer details that I missed with like the first coat. These are all just base coats at this point. I haven't actually, uh, completely covered anything at this point, but I usually only do about two coats again. Uh, there's plenty of really decent painters out there. If you want to watch any of those, this is just a quick mock-up so that you can get an idea of what can be done with these D&D miniatures by WizKids and then throw them on a dial that already exists. So I really like this guy. He's coming along. <laughs> he really looks kind of like a Power Rangers villain at this point. Uh, but I actually, I really like that. That's just kind of my style. I like really, not necessarily flamboyant, but just very colorful and, um, unnaturally like looking kind of monsters. Uh, my first paint and take that I did was a beholder that I made look like a pine cone. So that's my favorite. Uh, this guy's coming along pretty nicely though. So at this point I'm going in white and I'm coloring in his teeth. So now he's got a nice pretty smile to go with his super fuchsia pink hair and purple wings. Um, I'm then doing some detailing with the black. You can't really see it there, but all I did was color the back of his mouth black so that it really makes his teeth pop. Uh, at this point, I'm doing a little bit more detailing on the face and the claws. I mixed some of my red with a bunch of the black to try and get his, to try and get like a deeper red as like a bloody look for his face and his claws. I want to look like he's mid battle. So I did that. I'm now dry brushing some of his mane with the black, uh, dry brushing a little bit of the wings. That's just to get like more details to pop. And I really didn't like the way that pink was looking. So I wanted to add as much detail to that pink as I could so that it wasn't just this bright, bright pink. So it looks like there's kind of like uh, the reverse of frosted tips, whatever that would be with black. And at this point I'm coloring in the spines with a bone white kind of color to try and make them look like they're truly like ready to pop out and just shoot around. Um, looks pretty gross at that point, to be honest. I, <laughs> I'm not really sure 
what I was going for, but uh, yeah, the the spiny weird flesh tail ended up grossing me out more than the weird human face. So that's good. Um, at one point, I try and put in eyes with white, and man, I just really need a much finer brush or one of those little pen things that you can do that with because I am shaky hands all over this. Uh, at this point, yeah, I'm still technically on my first coat, although I'm going back over the tail and doing some fine details, adding some little blood work and stuff. Um, I will do a dry brush with some white on the wings to give it a less, less like fictional kind of look, I guess. I mean, it's clearly like a fictional creature, but give it something that's just less uh, pop out with like that deep purple. Um, I really wanted to make its wings look kind of clearish, kind of give them like a veiny, gross, like thin membrane look. That's just usually how I like to do my wings. Um, I like damaged wings. I like for miniatures, especially like uh, I, li I really like the battle damaged kind of looking characters and creatures. So that's kind of like the look that I wanted to go with. Um, partially, and by doing this, I really wanted to show that uh, Heroclix is applicable to D&D &D encounters and D&D &D miniatures are applicable to Heroclix. So here's what we got going on so far. There's some detail. Not looking too rough. Um, <laughs> you can clearly see that it's not quite quality. But again, like I said, not the world's greatest painter here. I'm just a hobbyist. I just enjoy, enjoy doing these little miniature dudes because it gives me something to do. And it gives me a fun little challenge. How does this relate to Heroclix? How can I find a dial that works for this? I could just make my own, but I prefer just popping them off the base. So um, speaking of popping off the base, the 2x2 two two green puff dragon actually comes off the base real easy. It only has two little hit points or two little click points where it hooks in. And then I just took a blade, a uh, hobby knife blade, and just shaved it down so that it was perfectly smooth. That way the Manticore's base can fit right on top of the dial. And speaking of the base, I really hate painting bases. It's my least favorite point. Um, I like when they have like a flight base and I can put them on the little black disc and then paint the disc separate. Uh, I really don't like when they're attached to their base and I have to try and paint around them. It I'm just not great with detail work, and uh, so I just did a, a basic green. He's just in some very mossy rock work stuff here, and that's all I did with his base. And at this point, I'm doing a wash. So this is the wash that came with the Manticore set. So it was like a deepish red, but again, um, washes don't really show up a whole lot. You can't really tell that's like the whole the whole point of a wash is so that you can't really tell that it like fills in the details but you can't really tell what the color is the color actually didn't hurt though so it really looks glossy right now because it hasn't dried but you can you can really see like some of the details i think he looks really battle worn um that's the kind of look that i was going for and i really like how his face turned out real creepy <laughs> it looks like a mad scientist that accidentally transformed himself into something um so here's that green uh puff dragon i was telling you about i like to drill these holes in especially if it's a figure that i'm going to use multiple times so in this case uh the green puff dragon i have three of so i probably won't worry about saving this base for the green puff dragon but I like to drill these holes and then super glue these magnets in. And then luckily the base on the manticore is thick enough that I can do the same to the manticore. I just marked where it was going to be sitting and super glued these magnets in. And with a little bit of <laughs> patience and uh, timing, uh, that's the most important part is the timing of this. Uh, you have a little manticore that just snaps on your base and he will come off as you can see there. Um, but yeah, the magnets hold them on pretty well. You can do quite a bit with them. Uh, Heroclix games aren't necessarily too violent, but, uh, you know, if you do knock him around, he should be fine to stay. This is uh, after about 10 minutes of drying, so he's still got some time to go left with that wash. 
but I think he turned out pretty well. I like the the bony kind of looking things on the wings, and I like the the gross gross tail. Thank you all so much for watching this episode of HeroClix Sculpt Swap. I hope that you had some fun. Um, feel free to make fun of my painting in the comments. Like I said at the top, uh, it doesn't matter how proficient you are as a painter. It, all that matters is that you enjoy what you do. And uh, don't set your standards to what you see online because there's some amazing painters out there. I don't happen to be one of them. So if this helps you feel a little bit more relaxed, then uh, that's great. And keep click swapping.